morning, everybody. Welcome to the city of Troy and its historic waterfront. We are here today to celebrate the completion of three significant projects that not only serve as criti critical infrastructure, but also beautify and restore a tourism anchor for our city. I'd like to introduce our local elected officials that are present with us today. United States Senator Charles Schumer. <laughs> Rensselaer County Executive Steve McLaughlin. <laughs> Rensselaer County Exec Legislator Carol Weaver. <laughs> Troy City Council President Carmelo Mantello. <laughs> Troy Council Member Sue Steele. <laughs> Troy City Council Member Anasha Cummings. A little over nine years ago, like many other municipalities throughout New York, Hurricane Irene tore through town with devastating winds and rains. The impact of that weather left us with compromised hillsides, cleanup of canals, streams and parks, and of course the loss of our city marina. In addition, many businesses along our floodplain suffered significant damage and loss of business while cleaning up. Following that event, officials began to then look at the impact of those weather events and the damage it causes, it causes in place, places mostly unseen, the seawall. All of the many steps taken back then through research, investigation, engineering, and of course through the diligence of many, including our previous city engineer Russ Reeves and the late operations director Bill Chamberlain, brought us where we are today and got this project moving. Many people have been involved along the way, but there are a few I would like to acknowledge as they carried the bulk of this project over the last five years. Mike Miller, Ryan Henderson, Jeff Netarowski, and the team at CHA Engineering for the design and construction administration and inspection of this project. Tyler Fain, Lance Farrell, and their team and some contractors of C.D. Perry for the construction of the seawall. Sage Franz and the team at Division of Homeland Security for their unwavering assistance in navigating through the FEMA process, of which is no joke, and helping us go through budget and scope of work changes smoothly. Two individuals who have really carried this project throughout the construction are Todd Dickinson, our project supervisor for the city, and Jan Peterson from CHA, who is our in-house inspector for this project. It's been a long and tedious project with many many challenging moments scattered throughout. It certainly was not a traditional run-of-the-mill construction project and they should all, everybody I listed, be proud of the work that they've completed. We'll give some background on the other two projects further into the program. For now I'd like to introduce Mayor Patrick Madden for some remarks. Thank you Monica. There we go. All right. Now you Thank can you hear me. Left. Great. Uh, I too am delighted to welcome you and our very good friend and friend Senator Schumer to Troy, more specifically to Troy's waterfront. Today we mark the completion of the Troy Downtown Marina, Riverfront Park North, and the core piece of this years-long effort, the Downtown Seawall Mitigation and Stabilization Project. A real mouthful. The city's entire western border is shaped by seven miles of Hudson River waterfront. The downtown seawall is the defining feature of our waterfront. It's our past and our future and connects us to this river. That future was threatened in 2011 when Tropical Storm Irene moved through the Capital District, bringing heavy rains and floodings to our cities, towns, villages, including here in Troy. Where we stand right at this moment was actually underwater, as it had been several times over the past two decades. Businesses like Brown's, Ryan's Wake, um, Dinosaur Barbecue, and numerous others coped with flooding and loss of business. The seawall itself also suffered additional damage, the flooding, the debris strikes, worsening the wall's overall condition that had suffered from decades of tides and erosion. Troy was very fortunate to have the assistance of Senator Schumer, who immediately understood the criticality of the situation and was relentless in his efforts to bring resources to bear. For the last nine years, we have had the tireless support of the Senator and his staff in moving this project forward. Stabilizing the seawall laid a new foundation for the revitalization of the entire downtown waterfront 
and adjacent neighborhoods. It also importantly represents a legacy investment in our infrastructure for the generations that will follow us. And we have Senator Schumer to thank for this incredible milestone. Today would not have been possible without his involvement. I also want to recognize our state and federal partners, including FEMA, Governor Cuomo, New York State Division of Homeland Security and Emergency Services, for their involvement and their support for not only the seawall stabilization project, but also the reconstruction of the marina on my, on my left. The new marina, damaged badly during Irene, will help bolster Troy's reputation as the capital region's premier boating and fishing destination. We are excited to welcome back boaters and anglers this fall and look forward to full-scale operations in 2021. Riverfront North Project, where we are standing today, is another critical expansion of the downtown Marina District and North Central and continues building our connection to the Hudson River. Thank you to the New York State Department of State and Governor Cuomo and the Regional Economic Development Council for their support. It's a beautiful addition to our working waterfront, one that will help attract visitors and residents to our shores, support local businesses, shops, breweries, and help the economic recovery. Projects like this seawall, the marina, this park, as well as the South Troy Industrial Park Road and the Ingalls Air Boat Launch embody our commitment to waterfront revitalization. Each of these projects is a great example of how state and federal cooperation can assist local communities build stronger, more resilient waterfronts, create new recreational opportunities for local families, and support local economies, something that has become even of greater significance as we struggle to return from the COVID pause. I want to thank and acknowledge our staff, especially Todd Dickinson, Chief Engineering Aide, Steve Streichman, Commissioner of Planning and Economic Development, and a very special thank you to our Deputy Mayor, Monica Kuzieski, who four years ago took the reins of these projects and has been the driving force that pushed them across the finish line. I'd also like to thank multiple city councils for supporting these projects. And finally, I'd like to thank my predecessor, who unfortunately is not here today, Mayor Rose Amelia, who began this project nine years ago. This is a great day for Troy, a great day for our waterfront. And with that, I'd like to welcome our great friend in Washington, D.C., Senator Charles Schumer. Senator. Thank you. That's okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you, Mayor Madden, and thank you, everyone here. Are we proud of Troy? We sure are. I remember when I first uh, came here, right after I was elected senator in 1999, you looked at the downtown and looked at the waterfront, look at it now. It's just a beautiful, wonderful transformation. And it shows you having faith in our cities and in the capital region is well, well placed. So thank you everyone for being here today and for all you've done throughout the expanse of Troy to revitalize this great, this great and historic city. Now, we have a lot of good things to talk about. I'm always trying to help out Troy. So I can't come to Troy without bringing some good news for the fire department and Chief McMahon. Is Chief McMahon here? I didn't see him. Yeah, there he is. Okay. Uh, when we kicked off the seawall project, we had the new fire boat I helped get with the port security grant. And today I'm happy to report that the Troy Fire Department has been awarded two federal grants in recent days, totaling $434,000. The, the first grant, be used to purchase new breathing apparatus packs, and the second is to purchase additional PPE for COVID response. So congratulations, Chief McMahon. Now it's great to be here with Mayor Madden and Commissioner Murphy from the Homeland Security Department, but I'm also happy to mention two old friends. I thought Mayor Rosemilia would be here. I guess he's not. And what about Tom, Tom Nord Nardachi? He's here. There you are, behind your mask. Um, who they were the first people to approach me on this project. And they appreciate Mayor Madden recognizing his predecessor as well. Uh, today's celebration is years in the making. And the Seawall Restoration Project marks the end of a nine-year saga to shore up Troy's future. As many of you know, the original Seawall was built back in 1922. 
and with yearly ice flow, debris, and significant erosion. It was weak. So when Tropical Storm Irene ripped through New York, it caused great damage and was the final twist to the dagger for this critical piece of infrastructure with which Troy could not do without. Irene was especially critical to the, all, uh, uh, to the already weakened seawall, because seawall projects not only uh, protect local businesses from water damage during major storms, but people may not know it, but the North Rensselaer County's main sewer line is only 15 or 20 feet away from the seawall. It runs parallel to the river. And it was endangered as well, which would have meant the water supply. In other words, Irene left the city susceptible to a major environmental catastrophe. And I was determined in any way that I could to help stave off the ecological disaster and repair the seawall. At that time, Mayor Rosemilia and Tom, Tom Nardacci, he was head of the Downtown Business Improvement District, called my office and asked if we could be helpful in securing funding. Steve Mann, who we're all blessed to have here in the Capital Region, He's run our Capital Region office, and he's our Deputy State Director, former Assistant Chief of the Rensselaer Volunteer Fire Department, and a Rensselaer County resident, and many other great accolades. Um, he started looking into it. And I came here and toured the site on a cool April day in 2014 to push off the fight for the initial 6.7 million in federal funding to jumpstart the project. Over the years, I never forgot how important this project was. So many of you made it clear. So thank you for your good work in pushing for this. And we were able in 2016 to secure what ended up being $14.5 million to secure the seawall. Because the environmental impact isn't the only reason for securing the seawall, we had to fight so hard. The damaged seawall hindered Troy's economic growth for years. Let me level with you. Waterfront properties, especially in a downtown that's coming back, usually are in high demand. But because of the destructive weather and the damaged seawall that couldn't do much to protect the shoreline, businesses, I remember talking to some business folks, they didn't want to move in downtown near the waterfront because they were afraid another storm would do them in. And so we lost out without the seawall in, we had underdevelopment without the seawall and we lost a lot of good paying jobs. This was damaging to the, intro, to the Troy economy, but also the economy of the whole region. And now we're in the middle of a global pandemic during which our economy came to a grinding halt. So as the capital region, anything we can do to help economic recovery, we should be doing. And that's what we're here to celebrate today. With, the econ with today's completion of the seawalls renovations, the city can finally begin to usher a new rebirth, a new strength to downtown Troy, new economic in investment to the waterfront and the entire community that'll help rebuild our whole region's economy. And Troy is ready. Local officials, many of whom are here today, have done a great job in recent years lining up investments into the Troy waterfront, getting ready for the moment when the seawall was completed. Some of these projects are this nice expansion of Riverfront Park North, big time upgrades to the Troy Dock and Marina, and it's important to the developing future of One Monument Square as well. So um, this is a part of the, why I like this job, why I love this job. Being able to help local communities fulfill their dreams with some federal help makes you really feel good with all the trouble we have and all the fighting and everything else. The fact that Democrats and Republicans, when we're represented in a bipartisan way here today, can push together to get something done and see the fruits of that hard work gives you a very good feeling. So I want to thank Mayor Madden, I want to thank Mayor Rosemilia, and I want to thank all of you. With today's celebration, it's clear, this is a new era for Troy's waterfront, and once again, it will be an economic hub of the Capital Region. Thank you, everybody. We love Troy. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Senator Schumer. 
Managing three separate, separate funded projects when they physically overlap with three different architects and engineers and three different contractors was certainly one of the significant challenges I mentioned earlier. The marina project was one that while we had the funding and also final sets of plans, we had to wait for the completion of the seawall. Never mind the fact that while the design of the marina had been completed, we discovered that we needed to blend the projects in design to make sure they were able to operate with each other. While the seawall and the marina are both funded through FEMA, they are two separate funding allocations and couldn't be blended. This is where the maybe not defined as efficient government process, when you have administrators who navigate that system expertly, you figure out how to make this work. Again, Sage Franz and Abby Kiley from Depart Division of Homeland Security have been a tremendous help and will continue to partner with us through the closeout process. A special thanks to Gallo Construction, Doc Doctors, Prime Engineering, and all of their subcontractors for the work on this project. Not only do we have a beautiful new dock system, we have a system that is designed to rise and recede with the tidal waterway, also making it more resilient in the flooding stages. We are thrilled to have Commissioner Patrick Murphy here on behalf of the Division of Homeland Security to give some remarks. Commissioner? Thank you. So a, a little different role to take you back in, in uh, history, just a, just a touch. In 2011, when the, when the water rushed in, out of the Skahari Valley, uh, I commanded the National Guard over here. So when we saw the water coming, our first flight was out over uh, the Mohawk, and we watched the water rise up over the top of the canal headhouses, literally submerging them. Following that along was the, the impact that you felt uh, in Troy, right here, from all of that water that was rushing down. Uh, I don't get to look at it from the from the helicopter seat anymore, but uh, that is really where a lot of this uh, this funding was uh, originally uh, put together. But it's not that you hadn't had floods and other issues uh, prior to that. But uh, what uh, since then uh, I have retired and uh, and moved on to the uh, Commissioner of Homeland Security Emergency Services. I work with a great team in the recovery and the mitigation area. Our recovery team really puts things back together, but mitigation is really where our future is in terms of uh, building back better into the future. So under the governor's leadership, the division has not only strengthened New York's emergency preparedness uh, posture, uh, but we've also ensured that the communities are more resilient as we move forward into the future. As part of this work, New Yorkers uh, has distributed, New York has distributed nearly $10 billion uh, since 2012, since Sandy, in projects to mitigate uh, the, the hazards that we have, much like we see here. This federal, pro federal dollars, I might <laughs> And we have to combine those with state, oftentimes, at a 70-25, sir. So just to throw that little piece in there. <laughs> These projects are perfect examples of uh, what we're doing across to rebuild our communities, uh, much like we do at Troy right here. And what a beautiful project, just to even look at it, the aesthetics of it uh, are incredible. And it wants, uh, it, it begs people to come and take a look and be part of this. So uh, our division uh, not only does recovery, but it does the mitigation. And we are happy to work with the communities uh, especially those uh, like the mayor and deputy mayor who have, have worked so hard on this project, uh, as well as uh, your county representatives. We get to work with uh, Executive McLaughlin as well on many of these things. And so uh, to all the leadership and to the uh, supporters of this, thanks for what you do. We'll continue to be by your side to work uh, through these issues. Thank you. recognize a couple new people. We have former Mayor Lou Rose Amelia here. And we also have Rensselaer County Legislator Mark Fleming. Thank you. Riverfront Park North. Well, this is just like the icing on the cake, isn't it? Back in 2012, when the Regional Council process started, then Deputy Mayor Peter Ryan thought an extension of the park would make a great project. Apparently, New York State and Department of State agreed, and the city was awarded a grant to make that happen. Several years went into design, and again, we were forced to wait until the completion of the seawall. The completion of Park North is a great example of placemaking and how design can complement 
and impact neighborhood properties. In addition, New York State Department of State was also one in part, one part of the regulatory process of the Seawall project. Many tense meetings were had back in 2017 to get their approvals. And there's a special shout out to John Wimbush and Jamie Ethier for their support and help along the way. This project wouldn't be complete today without the assistance from our commissioner planning, uh, Steve Strykman, 3T Architects, Chase and Engineering, Duth DeConzo, I knew I was gonna mess that up, Guth DeConzo Consulting Engineers, Malloy Construction, and all of their subcontractors. Always a great partner for the City of Troy, we are pleased to welcome the, from New York State Department of State, Sarah Crowell, the Director of Office of Planning, Development, and Community Infrastructure. Well, this is, um, thank you all so much for, for having us here and on behalf of the um, of Secretary of State Rosanna Rosado, who had wanted to be here today, but unfortunately her travel um, schedule didn't allow it, but um, we're really, really pleased. I'm really pleased to, to see this, this project finally complete, as the speakers before um, mentioned. This has been a long saga, years of, of, of trying to make different grants work together, different projects work together, bring federal and state money together. Um, so I'm pleased that we brought our state money to, um, to be part of this project. Um, and I want to congratulate everyone, um, city, county, other state agencies, federal, um, for, um, for coming together and having a hand in revitalizing Troy's incredible waterfront. Um, we're so pleased to we supported this project, um, not only through our consistency review, but our local waterfront revitalization program. Um, the city's been a valued partner in that program for this project and many others throughout many years. Um, and it's just gratifying to see, to see the work that's happened here today. Um, we're working with communities um, through the Office of Planning, Development, and Community Infrastructure throughout the state to advance resilience on our waterfront communities um, through progressive land use solutions and community-based planning and development. Um, so I am, I remember as, as all of you do, the, the devastation that, that came with Irene um, here those, um, in 2011. And it's so I'm particularly gratified to see here our placemaking come together with, um, with resilience and that the city's infrastructure not only is now going to be more resilient in the face of high waters going forward for, for many, many years, but, um, but also um, the you know, we've been able to, to improve the connection to the waterfront for the city's residents and create a real, um, a real attraction here that'll bring economic development, community pride, and, um, and recreation uh, for, for the residents. Um, and now more than ever, I just want to add, resilience is sort of, it, during this pandemic, taken on another, um, there's another aspect to resilience that we're becoming aware of. Um, and, and this trail, the, we're seeing the valuable role that parks and public spaces play in overcoming social isolation and giving um, especially vulnerable communities, but everybody, a place to, to recreate safely and um, healthily and um, come together even when, when we're having to socially isolate. So i um, particularly pleased to see this here now and to be able to serve all the people of, of Troy in the capital region. Um, so once again, I just want to say this Department of State is so excited to have been, to been part of this transformative project that improves the connections between the city of Troy and the Hudson River, makes the city a, a more resilient place, um, creates economic development. This is, this is the start of, of a new era for the city. And um, thanks again. Congratulations. Can't wait to come out next summer and get on a boat. <laughs> All right, final words. Major projects such as these, when they're going into construction phase, always have an impact on those that surround it, or in this case, literally run through it. There are several here today that deserve special recognitions for their patience, their assistance, and also their dedication to the city. Sam Judge from Judge Development, I'm gonna work my way south and come north. Sam Judge from Judge Development, Kevin Special from Dinosaur Barbecue, and I mean in his business. You could have like touched the concrete truck while we were eating dinner. Chris Ryan from Ryan's Wake, Christine Nealon from Trip, Gary Brown from Brown's Brewing, Michelle Hayes from New York State Marine, Kevin Betty from the Betty Properties at First Columbia Properties, American Cruise Lines and Blount Cruise Lines. And I know those two aren't necessarily Troy businesses, but they come here every fall and trying to dock those ships 
two years in a row while construction is going on was nothing short of a feat. So not all of these interactions have been rosy, as you can imagine, but eventually we all came together to find solutions, and I couldn't be more thrilled with the results. From today through the end of this boating season, we will have the docks available as courtesy docks. We'll announce shortly an RFP for third-party management for the 2021 season. Today, tomorrow, and into the future, I encourage all of you to support our local establishments. It is also restaurant week here in the city of Troy. As we continue with COVID restrictions, please, please continue to support your small businesses and restaurants so that they can be here in the future so you can continue to enjoy Troy. We'll now move to the ribbon cutting ceremony and conclude our festivities. Thank you all for okay. coming and we look forward to having you here multiple times, all the time, starting today. <laughs> For a couple just for 10 seconds get everybody photos don't slice yet smile <laughs> can i have everybody look right here one time please thank you all right we're going to go three two one we're going to cut when you're cutting you're looking at the ribbon you're going to want to really put the ribbon as far back into the scissors as possible to get actual cut all right three two one Go walk down to the marina now. Oh.